go ahead and take it away. Right. Hello, thanks for joining today. Um, I want to walk you through a, a really great tool we have available to all partners that can help you assess your current uh, cloud maturity and capability uh, called the Partner Transformation Readiness Assessment, or as we call it internally, the PTI. I'll explain where the PTI acronym comes from shortly. So what is this? It's basically a self-assessment tool, as I said, that helps you measure your current cloud capability. It is a moment in time assessment of where you are right now. Um, it takes partners through a series of questions about business capability. We ask a series of questions about your cloud strategy, your sales and marketing infrastructure, and how you um, handle sales and marketing and what your business model is. And it also assesses your technical capability, looking at cloud services, your solution area focus, and uh, what sort of cloud tooling you utilize. It also will ask questions about um, uh, skill sets within your organization, how many people you have, certified people you have, how much time you devote to um, training and skilling and so forth. Um, the questions are weighted, 60% for technical, 40% for business. And based on that weighting, each answer option is assigned a score and that assesses your maturity level. Um, when you complete the assessment, you get an index score, which is the partner transformation index where PTI comes from. Um, the score places you in a, in a quadrant. Um, so you can see where you um, sort of rank against other partners in the ecosystem who have taken the assessment. Um, the score places you in one of four maturity levels, core, enhanced, advanced, or next gen. Um, so you could be, depending on where you sit, if you're in that upper right-hand quadrant, that would mean that you are um, pretty mature in both business and technical, but um, you could be in the lower, lower right quadrant, and that would mean that um, your technical capability is pretty strong, but maybe your business tech uh, capability needs a little more um, work. Um, in addition to getting this final score, which shows you where you sort of land and compared to other partners, it gives you some recommendations and next steps and resources to leverage to help you continue to grow your business with Microsoft. Um, it comes in a form, what'll happen after you complete the assessment is that you will get a um, email that'll come to you that'll give you the entire um, recap of your scores. It'll give you this recommendation. You'll also be able to take a look in this tab here, it says detailed results is where you'll actually get a breakdown of each answer in each um, section. So it really gives you a lot of detail about where you sit compared to other partners based on each answer. Um, and then there is a series of resources that are listed below that you can go um, look at and take in um, based on the recommendations. We are also in the process of updating this. We have some new resources that have come online. And so we're trying to tailor this to really fit your, um, your real score. So the recommendations you would get here, as an example, like I mentioned, if you were, maybe you, your business capability is really strong, but where you need some help is in technical skilling, the technical capability, then what we would show here would be more resources that direct you towards training, um, other technical uh, resources that are available to help you build up your technical skilling. Same thing if it was the other way around, then this would focus a lot more on um, business capability. It just depends on what you, uh, what each partner's score is. It's very um, customized to your uh, organization. Um, we have recently got a new updated video from Mark Strut at Neural Impact. And we will um, share these slides with you at the end of this, so you'll be able to access this. But Mark really does a great job of walking you through the tool um, and how to use it, how to, how to approach each question and, and um, think about your answers, and how you can use this during your business planning so that um, it gives you a real chance to uh, think about um, as you're planning what you're going to do for the coming year or a new uh, practice you want to 
move into, it gives you the opportunity to get a sense of where you are right now and what um, changes or uh, you would need to make in your organization in order to go pursue that new opportunity. Um, the best piece of advice we have is when you take this exam, um, excuse me, assessment is to bring your leadership team together and complete it as a group. Um, it's open to any um, partner. All you need to put in the um, form when you access the page is the name of your organization, which role you have in the organization and your MPN ID number. So what will sometimes happen is sometimes the sales and marketing person will take it. A technical person will take it. A CEO will take it. It's the, we really do want it to be taken more than once. But what will happen is each person in the organization will have a uniquely different view, maybe of capability. Um, so that's why the scores will be different a little bit depending on who takes it. So that's why our best practice is for you to gather together um, as a group and answer the questions together so that you're all aligned on where you think you actually are right now. The, the other really big important thing to remember here is that this is not meant to be a, I've taken and now I um, move on. Yep, you will go move on and go pursue um, the recommendations and, and use this to, to start pursuing whatever uh, new area of business or practice you're trying to, to do. But it's a good idea four to six months later to go back and take it again after you've implemented some of those changes just to see how your score is um, changing. Um, there had a, I had a thought in my head for a second ago about um, something else to consider, um, but I've lost it right now. Um, but yes, it's a, please take it more than once um, and use it as a, a a way to track your progress as you make changes in your business. And that is my presentation. Anybody have Wait. any questions? Um, I was going to ask you um, if there are kind of um, standout questions you typically see from partners, uh, things to be well aware of or that come from the uh, FAQ? Um, no, I mean, there there really isn't any standout questions. The one thing I will tell you that we, I mentioned the weighting we do. One of the area, the sections of questions, we ask questions about um, solution areas and how Microsoft groups, you know, the various clouds, whether it's Azure, modern work and security or um, business applications. Um, those questions are not weighted and we don't assess a weighting value to them because we're not trying to um, say that one cloud is better than the other. So those those are the only questions in the assessment that are not weighted. It's just for us to get a, a better gauge of where uh, which practices and which um, solution areas you are actively working in um, as we make our recommendations for you. Um, the other thing to remember, and this comes up quite a bit is that um, it's easy sometimes to forget to answer a question. And then when you get to the end and then submit it, it won't let you submit unless you've answered every question. So that is a that is something we, um, that comes up quite a bit. Um, people will say, I've hit the submit button and nothing is going through. Um, that usually means they forgot to answer a question. So just go back through the assessment and make sure that you um, that you've answered all of them. We are working on a, a fix in the in the UI that'll make it a little more obvious if you miss a question as you complete each section so you don't get all the way to the end discover you skip. An email alias for feedback. So if you encounter if you take the assessment, if you have any questions, if you have any feedback about some of the questions, um, sort of the methodology. If you want a little bit more information about it, feel free to. Uh, send an email to this alias and obviously if you have any issues or problems same thing um because we're fairly responsive to this when people um do that. send us feedback it's usually about what i mentioned that i submitted it and it wouldn't go through and just ask you to go back and look at the co make sure you answered all the questions um hello uh, denise hello i do have a question i'm yep. a telepia 
for Western Europe. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if this tool is available, available through Solution Workspace. I believe, I'm not sure we have it added into Solution Workspace yet, but we are working to get it added in there. I, I know we included it in the last update we were doing, but I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if it's in there yet. Okay. Uh, so where can our partners access the assessment? So the best way to do it is you can either go find it through um, this, a, uh, this email address. Oh, okay. And uh, it's also, you can find it on the um, Build a Practice page. Uh, it's on the Digital Transformation page on the Microsoft Partner Network website. There's a couple oh. places where you can find it. I do, and it's also now been added into the lifecycle emails that go out to partners. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then Denise, one final question. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking about um, different partner sizes of uh, in terms of their organization. I imagine this, you didn't mention this is open for all partners. Mm -hmm. Just in the uh, the response you've seen so far, does there tend to be more representation from small, medium, or enterprise partners? Um, is there any difference in how they would think about this for their business or any considerations in that regard? Uh, a good mix. It is a tool that PDMs use with managed partners. So um, when they do their business planning for the partners who are managed, but what we have discovered is that um, a very big um, collection of non unmanaged partners take the assessment. So it's a cuts across all sizes. Um, one thing you'll notice is, and this comes up in sort of our um, playbooks as well, is that when we mention in our practice development playbooks, we'll talk about roles, various roles in an organization, what you might need to launch a very uh, specific practice. Obviously, if you're in a smaller partner organization, it, one person would probably fill more than one of those roles. We do take into account that um, not every partner organization is a big enterprise company where they have lots of people to fill multiple roles. Um, it just gives you an idea, idea of the kinds of um, skill sets you need um, to do that practice. But um, it's really designed, we've spent a lot of time in the last um, year, most of uh, the fiscal year 20, working on how to make this tool more efficient uh, and accessible to small um, SMB uh, mid-sized partners and, and also not just services partners, but to also uh, pose the questions and waiting so that it's more relevant to ISVs as well. So. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, that concludes the questions that I had. Uh, I don't see anything additional in the chat or on Microsoft Partner Community. So I'll go ahead and conclude the recording. We will be hosting this uh, video and the PowerPoint that Denise just shared on Microsoft Partner Community, and any additional questions can be posted there. Thank you so much, Denise, for your time and expertise on this tool. Everybody have a great day, and we will see you on the next Ask Me Anything. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.